Um, the last time I think I gave a talk at previous LSF MM in Puerto Rico. And at that time I was thinking mostly about uh, memory, print, memory pr footprint um, side of the problem. But now I'm kind of try to cover more. <coughs> So uh, it's not a secret that on any modern system we create and destroy a ton of C groups, and in particular system D likes to do it very often. You like you run something, for example, it crashes <laughs> ten minutes later, and uh, system D deletes the old C group, creates a new one, and it can re be repeated and repeated. Um, obviously, uh, there is a there are some costs to create and destroy kernel objects. Um, there is a cost of creation, there is a cost of destruction. Um, cost of creation is kind of low, so I don't think we ever had any issues there, but mm, cost of destruction can be really brutal, but what we are doing, we're just postponing it to a better time. So like we use reference counting model and we're just saying that at some point in the bright future, all the references will be gone and we will be able to release the C group. Um, the obvious problem is that it usually takes a long time and in many cases it's never happening. So instead of paying for destroying the C group, we are paying for uh, having a lot of dying C groups in the system. Uh, it, it's not coming for free, so there are some problems and issues. Um, so the most obvious is CPU overhead whenever like we are reclaiming memory, we are going over the C group tree and like dying C groups in this sense, they are not different to live C groups. So like if we have thousands of dying C group, as a reclaim is becoming more CPU uh, costly. Um, the second is memory for footprint. Uh, memory C groups are large objects on like average on modern servers, depending on number of CPUs and NUMA nodes, it's somewhere in hundreds of kilobytes per memory C group. So if you have thousands of them, you're like wasting several hundred megabytes, if not gigabytes of memory. Uh, but that uh, is first two problems were like something we focused a lot in recent years, but uh, now I realize there are kind of new problems. So uh, one problem is user experience. Let's say you have, I don't know, system dot slice, very large, I don't know, 10 gigabytes large. But if you go over all existing living C groups, they may be, they could have be like, I don't know, 100 megabytes. And a user may ask like, where, 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 <laughs> where's my memory? Like where are the 10 gigabytes of memory? And a user has basically no visibility into it. Like we have some statistics at parent level, but yeah, it's not enough. Um, and actually the worst problem here is that like the, f I mean this living C group, they may look like uh, they're taking 100 megabytes, but it's also not true <laughs> because they might reuse for free all the page cache and uh, slab memory, which was created by uh, dying C groups. Uh, so for them, for this living C groups, uh, things are also not working well. Um, so I, I put it as, as a memory sharing issue. So it's not a secret that uh, we never were good at um, handling memory which is shared between different C groups. Like we just, whoever creates a page is getting charged for it and everybody's using it for free. Uh, but actually with dying C groups, we have the same problem. It's just sharing is happening not with uh, between like living C groups, but usually it's uh, happening between the different generations of the same workload. Um, and as I said, it's this sharing is breaking many basic uh, features of C group, memory C groups, right? So uh, if significant part of used memory like um, act actually like hot working set is belonging to the previous memory C group, which it was deleted. Like you can't really trust the size of your newest generation. You can't like your limits are not working. Your protection is not working well. And your statistics is also like not accurate at all. 
Um, so there was a lot of work done uh, in recent years uh, related to dying C group problems. So uh, that's, this is a short list. Uh, I could miss something, but I think the first big part was slab reparenting, which I presented at previous LSFMM. Um, that helped to solve I mean, most of the dying C groups were pinned by uh, remaining slab objects, so that helps a lot. Uh, then we went through complete rework of slab accounting, and at that time we introduced object C group API, uh, like the name is Cartes of Johannes, uh, which is kind of a wired thing. It's basically, I, I initially thought about it as, as a kind of uh, out of pointer in C++ terms. So it's just a pointer with a, a reference counter which can be used instead of memory C group. Uh, and the idea is that it's small object, so it's way better to accumulate object C groups in memory C groups. And um, it also can be atomically switched to point at the parent C group. So we are getting uh, reparenting for free, kind of for free. And this, uh, later this API was reused uh, by Muchung to uh, convert accounting of non-slap objects, and I used it for per CPU accounting. So it's, there are at least several use cases now. Um, recently I worked on um, uh, CG write back uh, cleanup, so the problem was whenever I know it's getting dirty, it's getting associated with write-back structure which was holding references to original memory and block C groups. Uh, and if nobody else were touching this inode for writing, it was like, yeah, the reference was there forever. Um, that was done. Another change, Johannes uh, switched uh, memory C group statistics to RSTAT, uh, I don't know, it's not API like mechanism. <laughs> Uh, created by Tejan for, uh, initially it was for CPU controller, and uh, that solved the problem of uh, statistic accuracy because previously uh, all MemCG statistics was all of number of uh, children in C group tree, and including dying C group children. So you can, if you have 2,000 uh, dying C groups in a tree, like all statistics numbers is pretty random. Um, and recently there was um, there was a big patch set from Muchun which uh, optimized uh, list of the row stuff uh, allocation and yeah. Um, so what's what's missing and, and what's going on? I think like the, right now the biggest question is like what to do with the page cache because page cache is what usually what's what is shared between uh, what is left behind. Uh, when the C group is deleted and workload is stopped and it's often shared between generations of the same workload. There is a patch set by Muchun. He posted it, I don't know, a few months ago. And he reused uh, Object C group API to do this. And I actually, I'm looking for kind of opinions here because I, 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 I'm not sure it's the best idea, but uh, I wonder what other think, people are thinking here. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, let me express my thoughts then. So basically, like, yeah, we can use Object C Group uh, API to, uh, to repair and page cache. It will solve the problem, but it adds some complexity because of this indirection. And I mean, the code is not looking nice, but actually it's a kind of a question, do we really want to uh, repair and all the page cache, or we should do something more smart. Uh, for example, like should we use all row vectors as this intermediate object? Do we really need each each church page to hold a reference to C group? Maybe not. So I'm kind of seeing, leaning towards this idea. Um, so another 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 question. For example, if we uh, if the, if a page is getting activated and we know that it it belongs to already di already a deleted C group, 
we know for sure that who is new user, maybe we should recharge it to differency group. Uh, it's kind of a question. We usually don't, don't like to recharge anything, but at the same time, um, the current case is not great either. Um, yeah, there was a patch from Wyman uh, to release uh, per CPU memory as soon as we don't use it. It's not a new idea. I sent a similar patch a few years ago, but again, it's it's adding more complexity because now when you access um, MemCG statistics, you need to kind of do more magic there. And if we, and it feels like it's not a solution, it's a bandage for like making uh, the memory footprint less severe. Um, I think we, we discussed different ideas about, yeah, um, what should we do with like page cache left behind, like maybe we should mark all these pages with some flag and then whoever you is using these pages should pay for it. Uh, it's kind of, the question here how to do it without like adding a lot of overhead on hot pass. And maybe the, <laughs> surprisingly the most <laughs> promising solution is coming from user space and it's, uh, it's the idea to kind of stop deleting and creating music groups every time. Yeah. Uh, instead, what we can do, we can, um, we, do, we can do basically, we can add another layer uh, in the C group tree, but it won't be a full layer. It will be just like the pit controller layer. So uh, whenever like something is restarted, we can just create a new sub C group, but the memory controller will be enabled only on like a higher level. It might happen in, soon in systemd, but actually it's also questionable because uh, now we just delegate to the user space as a, answering the question whether like the new stuff and the old stuff are the same stuff uh, and whether it makes sense to kind of, especially if you have memory protection, like let's say you had a very big C group protected with memory and then like you restart something different with the, with the same name and then you protect all the stale page cache. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have. So yeah, what I'm really curious what you guys think about um, page cache reparenting and like what, what, what we want to do here. Um, I, I think even if uh, system D um, changes the way it operates for like if if there's a, a cron job that has a service or something associated with it, right? Instead of creating a new C group for every run, it can now use the same C group because it's a known job and it doesn't need to create a new C group for every instance of that job. But yeah. th I think there will still be cases where um, where you do one-off executions, right? Yeah, exactly. They're, they're, it's still not avoidable, so I, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great that they're fixing it. And I mean, every time you don't have to delete and yeah. recreate C groups, it's nice. But it, I think it still makes sense to um, to fix the fix the runaway pile up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It won't fix all the cases. It just like it make it can make the problem smaller for most users. I'm curious what the um, with the LRU VEC indirection, right? You you would only have to move the entire LRU VEC instead of iterating pages. But yeah. Would, wouldn't that mean that every time you have a page and you need to identify its C group membership, you would have to go through the LRU VEC? Yes. And that's not always there, right? Yeah, it's, there are <laughs> like big questions. Like. Okay. But in general, it would be really nice if we can get away from this idea that like every charged object has a reference to a C group and then instead we can just, if it's live C group, it's protected by being live. And like if we do all the cleanup stuff and like recharging stuff during the destruction of it, and then we can literally release the C group just immediately after or like the end stage of this process. That would be really nice. And it would actually right now it's another problem is that, um, you know, it's protected by reference counter with like some huge, usually some huge value, and uh, it's absolutely impossible to say if something is going wrong there. We are leaking C groups in the 
in the normal case, and if something is wrong, we may be leaking them a little bit faster, but like it's really hard to detect. That, that's why I kind of like the reparenting, right? Because it would be more clear whether there is an active leak or if, if the common case does the immediate garbage collection. Yeah, but then you have the same problem for objects you group count. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't know, I, I think I like the object C group um, based reparenting the best. Like it, it doesn't it doesn't get in the way of still thinking about stuff like LRU back batching. But I, I it seems to me it would fix the problem most directly with uh, infrastructure that's already there. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm kind of yeah I'm, Mixed feelings. About. It's not. It's not the prettiest. Yeah, it's not right the prettiest. The, it, yeah, and it's it won't share. It won't, it won't solve the sharing problem. So it's only about like uh, garbage collecting problem. Right. Right. Um, cool. Thank you.